Today I'm going to show you how to set up your magazine cover and this is just a fun simple assignment to show you the importance of color and typography as well as incorporating elements and principles of design. So first you need to set up your background photo. Most of you will probably have a portrait, a portrait oriented photograph. I have a landscape one, so I need to somehow cut this down so it's more of a taller rectangular shape or the shape of a magazine cover. So I'm going to crop my photo by cl clicking on the crop tool and I'm just going to make it more of a rectangular portrait oriented shape. So now I have my photo that I can work from with the right orientation. So now we need to add our title, add some article titles, play with the fonts, add some colors, and then play around with the design of it. So my title is going to be cute and fuzzy. And so all I need to do is take my text tool, click on that T, I can change the colors now or I can change them later. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna focus on getting the text in there and then I'll play around with color and things like that. So I'm just gonna click, I think I want the the title probably down here. And I want it to be kind of big, so you can play with the fonts over here in this area. And I probably want it even bigger than that. Maybe I'll try 100. So there is my title, cute and fuzzy. It's really small right now. Notice that when you finish typing, you have a new text layer that can be turned off or invisible, turned back on again, and you can play with the order, kind of change things around. If you double click on it, on the T part, then you can select the words. You can make them even bigger. So I'm probably, let's see how 300 works. Yep, that looks better. So there is my title, and then I'm going to add an article title. And remember, you're going to need at least five. I'm just going to add one so you can see how to do it. It's the same thing. You'll click somewhere. You can change around the font size. That is still too small. Maybe I'll try 72. And it doesn't have to be a typical magazine cover. You don't have to redo something like Sports Illustrated. There's not very, ma very many magazines out there that focus on cute and fuzzy animals such as little goose babies or kittens. And so you can kind of have fun with this and make imaginary, funny, made up magazines. So I've got I've got my article title, this will be an article within the magazine, and then I have my actual magazine title. And from here you can play around with colors and with fonts. So I'm gonna, I think I want to change up the font to make it something more cutesy. So if I double click that again, I can go over to this drop down box and I can make it more cute looking. Because no matter how silly you end up making your artwork, I mean, no matter how silly you end up making your magazine title, you're going to want all of the effects to kind of mesh well together. So even though this magazine would never exist in reality, I'm trying to make it just overwhelmingly cute. So another way to change up the font is if you have your font layer selected, so I want to mess more with the title, Instead of double clicking on the T, remember if you double click on the T, you can change the actual letters, you can change the size and the font type. But if you just double click in this grayish area, then you'll bring up this box that says layer style. And this is kind of cool because you can add shadows to your fonts, you can add a bevel and emboss, you can do an outer glow. So with an outer glow, it's kind of outlined now, and you can use these 
different settings to change up the way it looks. And so this is kind of fun to just experiment with different things. So now I have an outer glow and it's kind of see-through in this area. And you can see that I've done that right down here. So let's do some more stuff. Let's play with the color. If I double click on that, I can highlight it and then I can play with the color. So I can either choose a color that will stand out from the background, and we know that complementary colors stand out. So since the background is green, I could click a red, and that would stand out. Or I could pick a color that also goes well with the background. So maybe I'll pick a yellowish color, maybe a yellow or an orange, golden yellow. So those are some ways to change up the color, to change up the text. And then here's some ways that you can add some more color and maybe add some more design elements. And this is where your creativity will get more involved. I'm going to create a new layer and this is going to go over the top of everything. And I'm going to name this borders because I'm going to draw some borders. So within your Photoshop tools, you should be able to draw rectangles and shapes just like in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to draw just kind of a square rectangular area around my title because I want it to make the color stand out more. And if I move that down, then the cute and fuzzy is over the top of it. If I change the color, and we'll see what happens. Oh, double click on it and you can change the color. Now you'll find that as you add more edits and things like that, you will probably want to, you might have to undo some things. You'll probably just have to play around with things until you find what you like best. So I don't think I like this color. I'm going to change it again. And that means I'm going to change the text again as well. Let's try... and emboss. Now in this layer style window, if you want to be able to change some of the other effects that you've um, chosen, you need to make sure that you highlight those chosen areas. So you'll select them if you want to use them, but then you have to highlight them and you'll do that by clicking on that area to be able to work with all those different types of layer styles. You'll probably want to experiment within this layer style window and just choose different options and experiment with all of those options and see how they work, kind of like what I'm doing. If you ever find that something you selected doesn't quite work, you can always unselect them by clicking that little check mark in the window or you could just undo it. So if you find something you don't like, you can get rid of it by unselecting, deselecting the check mark. And it's just a good idea to experiment within these layer styles to find out what you can do to all of your texts because there's lots of different options you can do to personalize the text on your magazine cover. So now I have a background color of yellow, base color of kind of a reddish color, and then I need an accent color. So maybe I will draw a line through it or something like that. So to paint a line, I'll use the paintbrush and then I will select a color. So I found it helpful that if you make a new layer, you can add design elements such as lines, things like that. So as you can see, the concept is simple. You just have to use an image, text, and color to create an interesting magazine title, but then you have to kind of add a little bit more get creative, experiment with things, 
try different effects, and I think you guys will create some interesting magazine covers. So I'm just going to make some more borders. I use the rectangular selection tool to select an area. And I don't want to add color to this area, I want it to add to the different area. So I'm selecting the inverse. And now I'm going to create a border around the entire image. And I'm using the eyedropper tool to select that yellow that I have. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket to fill in that border. So a lot of this project is just creating borders, creating different colored areas, adding text. So I can deselect that area that I used, and now I have a good yellow border. So at this point I'm just going to film my process of moving things around, adding more colors, adding more text. And this is basically all it requires, is just completing the magazine cover. Moving things around, adding articles, using your design, um, knowledge to create an interesting looking magazine cover. Another great thing you can do is if you want text to stand out more against the background, you can draw in a rectangle. You can change the color by double clicking on it. Let's say I just want maybe a whitish color. But if you don't like the way it blocks the background, you can change the opacity. So if you have that layer selected, I'm working with this rectangle right here, this white one. If that's selected and highlighted, I can go up to opacity right here, and I can make it a little bit see-through, and that will make the That will make the background pop out just a little bit more. I mean the, the words pop out just a little bit more. You can also go back and change the words as well. So I have my title. I have two article titles. Now I need to fit in three more somewhere. And this is a good time to maybe think of some principles of design. So things such as balance, things such as unity. Do I want to stick with the same color palette? Do I want to choose different colors, different, different text fonts? Where am I going to place these article titles? I have one up here that kind of pops out nicely against the river. I could put some in this space, I could put some in this space, I can move it all around and see how I'd like it at the end. The great part about working in Photoshop and having all these layers is that you can turn things off. If you don't like them, you can get rid of them, you can change the order. You can even go back to the background picture and you can change up the colors in there to kind of work with your color palette. So if I wanted to add, let's say I wanted to add I'm going to add kind of a warming filter. So if I click on this background image, I can go to our color editing options and I could I could go to color balance and I could add more yellows or reds or make the picture look a little bit warmer so that it fits with my color palette a little bit better. So it's important that you use your creativity, you use your design skills, and you create an interesting magazine cover using Photoshop. So as you can see, I've added a few more things, and I can go through them, kind of show you what I've done. So I've, here's all my layers, I have quite a few now. I added this ellipse, it kind of creates another word cloud, I added these words, and then I added this article title. Now let's say that you came up with a really cool way to design your font and you don't want to have to go back in and set the effects and the strokes or the colors. You just want to be able to copy it and use that several times in your magazine cover. To do that you'll select the layer you want. So let's say this season's top new kittens I really like the way I designed that font, and I'm going to use that for another 
article title. I'm going to click on that layer. I'm going to drag it down to this icon right here. This icon that you're going to drag it down to, it'll create a new copy layer. So it's this kind of squarish one. I'm going to drag it down and then let go. And if I move it, now I have two layers just like that. And if you double click on one of those, you can delete the text and you can type in something new. So I've typed that in and now I can move that around. And I think I will put that down there and I'll probably add something behind there to make it pop out more. You'll find that if you don't like where something is, all you have to do is find that layer. So I don't like the spacing between these two and so I selected this layer and I can now go and I can move that. I can move that down further just a little bit so that there's more space. So with this, I think I'm just going to add an outer glow so that that will kind of pop out from the background just a little bit better. So I think I'm just about finished. I have my title, I have my background color, which is yellow my base color, which is purple, and then my accent color, which is red. I have my finished title, and I have one, two, three, four, five article titles, and then I have my edited background picture. So I have all these different layers. What I need to do now to finish up is, first of all, I need to decide if I'm happy with the way this looks. And I'm still not quite happy. I kind of want to move this title down just a little bit more as well. Okay. It's important that you finish all of your changes before you flatten your picture or else you won't have access to do that. So another good idea is to save your project at this point as a PSD. This is a working file. This means if you finish it and then you see that maybe you misspelled something, you can go back to this PSD file and you can fix it. So if I go to File, Save As, I can save this as my cute and fuzzy magazine cover and it'll be a Photoshop document. That means I'll have access to all of these individual layers and I can still click on layers and change them if I find out something needs to be changed. Once you know you're definitely finished, you'll need to flatten all these layers together and kind of compress them. And what that does is that makes it so you, it's basically all one cohesive image and you don't have any layers anymore. It's good to do this because then you can post it to basically anywhere but it can be bad if you still have things you need to fix. So do this as your last step. You will go to Layer at the top. You will go to Flatten Image or Merge Visible. And now that I've clicked on that, I only have one layer. And then from here, you can go to File. You can click on Save As. And you can now save your image as a JPEG. So at this point, I have my finished JPEG file, I have my PSD working file, so if I find out I've made any spelling errors or if I want to change around the colors, I can still do that. But at this point, I could probably just turn this in since this looks good to me. So it's good to go down the list in Canvas and kind of make sure you've gotten everything, all of the requirements. And then it's also really good to double check and make sure your image is flattened and it's a JPEG. And you can see that right there, it's a JPEG, it says JPG, and then there's only one layer so that you know it's flattened.
And at this point, you can turn your project into Canvas.